kind of horsepower do these two things up? Does anyone have information on horsepower? I think it's ridiculous. It depends on the car. The horsepower. Um, you see the Cybertruck there? You know what you get with a Cybertruck purchase free? You get a free Porsche. Because it's faster than an I-11. They show the video of the racing one. But it's just the technology of electric electricity, an electric motor, and a giant battery. It beats an I-11. So you get a free pickup truck, or you get a pickup truck and a free 911. That's pretty good considering how much 911s cost. Anybody have any information on horsepower? I know it's ridiculous. Yeah, Ours is a very small one. Is it? Yeah, okay. 80, 80 horsepower. Okay. The Rivian is supposed to have four 200 horsepower engines, one on each wheel. The one on each wheel. Right. Okay. Okay. As well as the torque, right? The, the James Bond boat. Uh, the torque begins right at zero. Right. Ah, so you're getting you're getting hundreds of foot pounds of torque or new units of torque right at that zero. So it's the the torque part is almost as important or more important than than the horsepower. Exactly. Right. So right. If you're having them done. I'm just going to interview you guys. Do you have one more question? So if you're cruising at a high at highway speed, what kind of torque do you have now? Instant torque. It's still the same amount still of things off, off this off uh, zero line? Like for example, with my Model 3, if I'm trying to pass a vehicle going up a hill in a passing lane in the mountains, I can be past that in less than two seconds. They say it's like time travel. You can imagine yourself in the position up there in that lane. You tap the pedal and you're just instantly there. It's not like that in all cars. Teslas are very good for that, right? Let's introduce ourselves. Who are you, sir? Uh, Gary Holland, my name. What do you drive? Uh, Bolt, Chevy Bolt. Ah, Chevy Bolt. Very sexy car. Yes. Matt Pointer. I drive a Tesla Model 3. How do you like it? I absolutely love it. Uh, I've driven it for over a year now. Uh, I actually just got back from a 7,000 kilometer round trip to San Francisco. It cost $240. Beat that, people. Beat that. We have a winner. Okay, you. I know you. I'm John Klein, and I drive in the family. Yeah. Fun car. I have one. You? When you use a uh, smart 4.2 EQ. You have a smart car. Electric. Yeah. Electric. Yeah, they have those, you know, those little smart cars, they have an electric version. The only, in fact, that's all they were making. And then they just all they make now. The all they make now is the electric version, which is very cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask you, what is your worst experience in winter? Uh, I haven't had any uh, bad experiences. This is my first winter, so I'm just having uh, my food. Does anybody have anything to say about what you're driving? Okay. My doors aren't greased great, so sometimes the latches uh, don't work properly at minus 40, but that's not an electric car thing. That's a car thing, but my, I've never had that problem. Anyone else? Any other questions from the audience? Sometimes my car gets so hot inside it's uncomfortable. I have to turn the heat on. <laughs> I'm a sweater myself. I don't like it home. A lot of insulation. Any other questions from the audience? I love the preheat option in the garage. In the morning, cars warm. Yeah. Where you go? Questions, curiosities, anything? You at the back? How are uh, lithium-ion batteries made, or, or you know what what chemicals go into it? Is is that a limited resource in the world, or no? There's lots of lithium. There's l the, apparently they they actually know this because they're using lithium for the power grid now because it's become that cheap. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, and actually, a, or a misconception uh, as far as the lithium ion batteries go, it's less than 3% of the battery, actually, the lithium part of it. Uh, so it's significantly more stuff like nickel and manganese, and you know, it depends on the car brand as well as the, uh, the battery chemistry uh, as far as what that makeup is. Uh, but they're um, finding more and more creative ways to find it all the time. Actually, one of the biggest places right now that they're basically mining it from is from Chile. Uh, they've got these big open pits uh, in Chile. It's not like an open pit mine. It's actually a surface layer of water uh, that they're dispersing soil in, and then they're skimming the top part of the surface. Actually, interestingly enough as well, uh, in the tar sands in Fort McMurray, uh, they're actually finding tons of lithium in the, uh, in the tailings from all of those uh, operations there as well. So it's all over the place. The most controversial part is cobalt, but uh, Elon Musk is trying to get cobalt out of electric batteries because they do come from the Congo, right? And there's questionable, questionable stuff there. But you know, there was a mining company in Saskatchewan that was trying to open up a cobalt mine now that it's popular in Saskatchewan. So we, if they do that, but hopefully you can get off cobalt. Any other questions? I saw some more hands. I'll start in the middle. Uh, you made an interesting point and in an example with the, uh, the Simpsons at the beginning when you said... Thank you. I thought that was an illustrative example. It was, and I think there's obviously an element of truth in that. I mean, when we got the 
most wealthiest countries in the world who have a vested interest in oil. But also you've got governments who make a lot of taxation from oil and obviously from the price of gas and fuel. Oil. Do you think they will allow electricity to remain as cheap as it is if they're going to lose all that income? Well, us people who are concerned about the world want electricity to become more expensive so that we're not polluting until such time as it becomes clean. I never say clean. Um, anyone? Well, in Texas, which is the Saudi Arabia of wind power, the uh, demand and crash because the price got so cheap they couldn't sell it. That's right. Well, that was this summer. The thing about driving an EV in Saskatchewan, and don't tell the government this, this is a secret between you and me and us up here, so we don't have to pay road taxes. So it's the people driving the combustion cars that pay for the roads are getting on the roads for free. This was no gas, no uh, road tax on, on electricity. You serve at that. Did I see someone else? You? I guess I'm, I'm wondering about the idea, particularly with the LEAF, is that you don't have a dealership here in town That's right. for questions or servicing. And, is that, a, is that an issue for you? Uh, it's not for me because I'm not getting service. I actually took my leaf uh, to the uh, uh, Nissan dealership here to show them what it was. <laughs> <laughs> they, were right, they all gathered around. We did that too. Yeah. And the, the only thing, the only thing we've taken it to there for was the back waiver. They wanted to, they could order it more easily than some other places. But you can get service at uh, Mako on electric cars and uh, most other car issues can be serviced at any other place like Cal Tire, et cetera. Yeah, I, I had a person uh, bring me over to his house for a test drive and his wife was, that was the deal breaker. She said, there's no service. I haven't had my car serviced. I, I don't expect to have my car serviced. The worst case scenario is I would spend 50, 60, 80 bucks having a towed up to, to uh, on a flatbed to uh, Prince Albert where there is a dealership, but I'm hoping that there is a dealership in Virginia any day now. Like they've got to come to their senses because they're selling a lot of the leaf is an, was until recently the number one selling electric car in the world. And uh, it's just because the Virginia they don't have them, yes. I'll answer for that. I'm working with some dealership. Oh you do? It will cost eighty thousand dollars for the dealership to install that leaf. Certification, right? Correct. They have to get and the equipment and they and have to have the training. And whole new base. case of build it and they will come. That's one of the issues that people have. Uh, as far as that goes, I think we just got to get on the horn and we, we just got to go knock on some doors and start asking, hey, is your uh, latest Nissan Leaf in stock? Oh, you don't sell it here? Why is that? Why do I have to drive to Prince Albert to buy a brand new Nissan Leaf? Why don't you have that here in, in your dealership, right? And that goes all across the board. At, at the majority of the car dealers in China, you go there and you ask about their electric vehicle offering and they look at you like you're from outer space and they're like, those are cars are only for California, right? And I mean, maybe some of us that came here tonight, uh, now that we've been educated by James, you guys know different. Uh, but I think it's going to take uh, us getting out and uh, owning these places and saying, hey, there is demand for it. And uh, we've got to get these places, uh, you know, kind of in the know. And that actually comes to uh, my second point, is uh, Jason Kirkshank, uh, he runs a group out of Saskatoon called SaskiB, uh, saskiB.ca. And uh, they're a really progressive group out of Saskatoon, uh, similar to our Electric Vehicle Association that we have based out of Virginia here. And uh, basically, they uh, go around and knock on doors, and they try to get as many people out as possible, uh, and as many, uh, much interest generated in these cars as possible to basically force uh, the dealer's hands to bring these vehicles in and, and get them as a demo model uh, so that they can bring them out and, and demonstrate them in the general public so that people can see them, they can test drive them, and majority of the time, once people take a ride in one of these cars, they, they don't really want to drive a gas car anymore after that. They start to see the benefits of it. And so it's sort of a the thing where we all kind of uh, get together and kind of network and kind of start pushing these guys in a maybe certain direction in a friendly or way, hopefully. I'm very sympathetic towards the problem. I know it's a lot of money and it's a gamble because if the van is not there, people aren't 